let me show you an example where uh, what we did last time actually wouldn't work. So it'll be really similar. Uh, this is basically the example we had last time, right? Um, but instead of 1 over t here, let me put 1 over t squared. Then I can divide both sides by t like I did last time. And I get this. And now it seems like there's no way I can write this as uh, x stuff only times t stuff only. So I could try to pull out 1 over t squared, like I did last time. Um, but that doesn't help. And in fact, I don't see any algebraic thing I could do that would get me to a situation where I've got something with x alone times something with t alone. And this certainly doesn't do, right? Because this involves t. So, um, so right now, if I, you know, if I try the same trick, if I divide both sides by this, then when I go to do the integral on the left side, it's not going to turn into an integral with respect to x, because there's this t here. So this would be a non-separable equation. So this is not separable. And so you couldn't apply the trick that we did last time. Um, let's start talking in general about situations where you can apply the trick. So if, uh, so here's what differential, here's what first order differential equations always look like. They look like this. Or if they don't, then you can do some algebra to get them to look like this. x prime equals, and then some stuff involving x and t. If you can get it to look like this, x prime equals some function of x only, and then times some function of t only. So if you can write this f of x and t as some g of x times some h of t, then you can separate. Then it works, because you can do this. You can divide by the x stuff. Let me write a little bit smaller here. Then you can divide by the x stuff. And then you can integrate both sides. With respect to t. And on the left side, you get this nice thing happening. And there are no t's here, which, uh, which allows this to work. It means we, we can change variables and view this as an integral with respect to x. If there were t's here in the integrand, we could not view this as an integral with respect to x. So here we'd have an integral like this. Sometimes the way people think about this is they, they split up the dx dt symbol here. So instead of viewing it as a change of variables, they just sort of skip all those steps and they go from here right to here by, by thinking about it like this. And you, you can do this if you prefer. So instead what people will do is say, well, the differential equation is dx dt equals g of x h of t. Then they will split up the dx and dt symbols, which technically doesn't make any sense, but it's just a formal way to skip from this step down to this step uh, very quickly. So they'll be like, okay, well, then we have dx over g of x equals h of t times dt. Then, once they reach this step, which doesn't make much sense on its own, necessarily, You'll just stick a squiggly line in front of both sides and say, okay, now they're now I'm viewing them as integrals. Alright, so that technique that we just did, that's separation of variables. And in general I can only write down this much because the rest sort of depends on how you compute what you compute for these integrals. Um, and Remember that when you do these integrals, you do get a plus c. These are indefinite integrals. You're going to get a plus c at the end. Um, 
If you want, you can also do, do, do them as definite integrals, and I'll show you an example of that. Sometimes that's a useful way to quickly satisfy initial conditions. But if you're just trying to get a general solution, then you do these indefinite integrals, and you should have a plus c. Um, and also remember, the plus c only needs to be put on one side. If you put a plus c on both sides, you know, if you put a plus c on one side and a plus d on the other side, then you can just merge those constants. So you just need the plus c on one side. All right, so that's separation of variables. Uh, right, uh, before I end this video, just a, a homework uh, hint or comment. Uh, sometimes you will see different variables playing the role of x and t, and that will show up on your homework, and that's intentional. That's to help you, like, you know, not everyone in the world always uses X and T for everything. In fact, that's maybe more of a modern development. Um, you, you should be able to look at a differential equation with different letters chosen for the unknown function for the, for the independent variable and still be able to um, apply the techniques. So sometimes, instead of X, you'll have Y in place of X. So instead of the unknown function being like X of T, sometimes you'll have Y of T. Or, even more actually really confusing sometimes, you'll have y of x. Or maybe f of x. You know? So if you have y of x, then you're viewing it as y equals some function of y and x. And then, um, you know, you're trying to separate. You're trying to write it as y prime equals and then some function of y only times some function of x only. So. Yeah, uh, just adapt, and if you need to just replace all the letters in your scratch work by X's and T's, sometimes I do that, that, that works fine.